There we go. Dan Ryder's in the house, people. All right. Good morning. This morning's devotional is going to come from a guy named David Robinson. He's going to do a little introduction of himself. When you see this, he is director of diversity and basketball coach at Grace Community School in Tyler, Texas. He's married to Erica, and they have two little girls. David is a graduate of CSU. He played basketball under Mike Shaw, as you're going to hear. And prior to Grace Community, David was at schools in Ohio and Indiana where he taught Bible and coached. David says of his current position, I was drawn to Grace Community School because of the direction that they are trying to go as an organization. The leadership has a deep conviction and vision to have Grace Community School more accurately represent the community of Tyler and more importantly, the kingdom of God. There is a deep desire here not just to be inclusive, but to celebrate our differences while not losing sight of the fact that there is so much about all of us that is the same. Mr. David Robinson. Good morning. My name is David Robinson. I currently serve as the Director of Equity and Inclusion at Grace Community School in Tyler, Texas. I'm also a CSU alumni. Although I'm very disappointed I'm not able to be there in person with you right now, I am excited for the opportunity to speak to you, even though it's through a video format. Today I want to talk a little bit about focusing on Jesus through difficult times. Have you ever had a teacher or maybe even a coach who has asked you to do something and afterwards you were kind of scratching your head thinking, what was the point of that? I don't even get what just happened. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that um, and one of those times that that happened to me. It actually happened during my time at Clark Summit University. See, while I was there, I had the opportunity to play a little bit of basketball under someone who was very familiar to the Clark Summit University family, Coach Mike Shaw. Don't worry, I, I wasn't that good. My games were practice. But anyway, I want to talk a little bit about one day in practice when Coach Shaw decided to roll out a new drill. And the name of this drill was called, Come Get Some. And so right now, some of you that know Coach Shaw, even in hearing that name, you probably have a good idea of where this could possibly go, or you're even thinking, ah, oh, yeah, that, that sounds a lot like Coach Shaw. And so we start, we, Coach Shaw decides to introduce this drill called Come Get Some. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. And so the drill starts by the entire team lining up on the baseline on one end of the gym, all right? And for argument's sake right now, just to kind of give you guys a visual, even though I'm not there, let's say we're on the baseline at the far end of the gym, near the locker rooms and near where the training room is. And so we're, we're lined up on the baseline, we're in defensive stance with our hands out. And one person at a time goes, and so you stay in defensive stance while people in front of you are going. And every time someone goes, you make one slide to get a little closer to the sideline. Once you get to the sideline, it would then be your turn to go. So you're in that defensive stance. Then when it's your turn to go, you take off running. And as you take off running, Coach Chapman has a basketball. And so I love Coach Chapman, but at times Coach Chapman was, a kind, he was kind of an angry dude. And so what he would do is he'd bounce the ball really high, or he'd just sling the ball, and it would go rolling out of bounds. And our job as players was to save the basketball. But we never really had a chance to save the basketball because they almost threw it where we had no chance of getting it. So after you do that, you're diving, you're jumping, whatever it may be. After you do that, you get up. Coach Miller, who's the other assistant coach at the time, he throw your basketball. You lay it in at the far end of the gym. You get the ball out of the net and you come dribbling back the other way. And then this is where the drill gets his name. As you're dribbling back the other way, Coach Shaw is waiting for you. All five, ten of him, 160 pounds of just grit. And he would have one of those arm shields that, that you see sometimes in football practice or in basketball practice that they would kind of give a little resistance to post players with. 
except Coach Shaw was going to give a little more and then just a little resistance. And so he's waiting, and he's down there, and he's just, just letting guys have it. And he's getting fired up. He's slamming the pad in the ground as it's coming. He's swinging it like a baseball bat. Just, just, just hitting us. And so as I see this unfolding, and it's my turn, I start developing a plan. Okay, I'm not going to wait to get hit. I'm going to try to take the fight to him. Good idea, right? Wrong. Bad idea. So as I'm coming down, and I'm dribbling, and I get closer to get my steps for my layup, and I pick the ball up, and I get my elbow ready, Coach Shao sees what I'm thinking. And he just, he braces up and just uh, lets me have it. Ball goes flying. I go flying onto the ground. After practice is over, there's a group of us on the team. We're all at dinner. And we're just kind of reflecting back on what in the world just happened. What was that? What was the point of that? We're making jokes. We're saying, who made Coach mad today? Oh, these guys are just making stuff up. They're just looking for reasons to beat us up and hit us. But the further away from that I got, the more I started to look at this drill and, and, and maybe even get a little perspective and some insight into what was happening here. And so let's kind of go back and revisit that a little bit because I think there's a lot that we can learn from this drill that we can apply to our lives right now. Okay? And so the first part of the drill was, like I said, standing on the baseline in defensive stance. And while you're standing there and you're in defensive stance, your shoulders are starting to feel it, your quads are starting to burn, and you've got a choice in that moment. And it was interesting how some people on the team made one choice and some people on the team made the other. And so the two choices were really this. The first one was you could stand there and you could not say anything, be frustrated, be mad. And we had teammates that did that. They were there thinking, this is stupid. Why are we doing this? My legs hurt. But then you also had teammates who seemed to not be focused on that, who seemed to put their attention on other people. And when I noticed that, I realized something magical seems to happen when you do that. When you're there and you're hurting and you look to the left and you look to the right and you see that your brothers are right there with you and then you start to encourage them in that moment, you start to forget about how you're actually feeling. And so you had that opportunity to, to, to build people up, to take the focus off yourself in the drill. So then from there, you go to the second part where you have to save, save the loose ball. And as I mentioned before, chances are you weren't going to save the loose ball. And so what was happening in that moment is Coach Shao got a chance to find out a little something about us. And more importantly, we got a chance to find out a little something about ourselves. And what we were finding out is, what is your response when the odds seem insurmountable? What do you do when the deck appears to be stacked against you? When the chance for success is very low? And so again, you have choices. You could just kind of go through the motion and kind of make a half-hearted effort. Or you could sell out and dive and sacrifice, even though it may not work for you. And then you get to the last part of the drill, where Coach Shao's waiting with the shield. And this was all about focus. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the goal, which is to make the layup? Or are you focusing on Coach Shao with the pad? Are you focused on the distraction? 
And it was interesting to watch as it unfolded because some people you could tell were really focused on Coach Shaw and the distraction and the pattern. And so sometimes he'd be, he'd be winding up, ready to hit somebody, and then he'd just kind of do one of those fakes and not even hit the person. And they would lose the ball. And the reason that was happening is because they were becoming so consumed with the fear and with the distraction. And what that fear was doing was it was causing them to brace for something that may or may not even happen. So right now you're thinking, okay, I kind of see some of that cool story, but really how does this relate to staying focused on Jesus in difficult times? As I think about this drill, come get some, it reminds me of two passages in particular. The first one is Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 to 32. And those of you that are familiar with this text, this is when Peter walks on the water. And so the disciples, they look out, they see that Jesus is out on the water and he's walking on the water. And right away, Peter gets fired up and he says, Jesus, give me permission to come out there with you. And so when he says that, you know the scene, the rest of the disciples are like, oh my goodness, here's Peter again. Why has he always got to be that guy? And, and, and let me pause for a second and let me challenge you. Don't, don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. And I'm talking about the disciples in this instance. Don't be the person that when someone around you decides that they want to go to the next level, they want to become a better version of themselves, they want to achieve, they want to strive, they want to serve God in a big way. Don't be the person to, to discourage them or talk down. Because maybe you're not willing to, to be as vulnerable as they are in that moment. So anyway, so Jesus tells Peter to come on out. So Peter comes out and he sees Jesus and he's walking on the water. He's walking. He's walking. And all of a sudden the text tells us that Peter starts to notice the waves around him. And at one point he even says he sees the wind. And I'm thinking, that must have been some serious wind. I mean, I've felt wind, but I've never seen it. But the fact of the matter is, Peter begins to take his focus that was on Jesus, and he starts to focus on the circumstances around him. And the Bible tells us that he starts to sink in that moment. He lost focus of Jesus and started focusing on the things, the challenges, the difficulties around. The second passage that this reminds me of is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And that's where the Bible tells us to fix our eyes. And I love that word in the English translation of the fix. Fix our eyes on Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Because again, that fixing is, I am locked in. Yes, things are happening around me, but I'm locked in to Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. And so right now, we're living in difficult times. For most of us, if not all of us, 2020 has not been what we expected. It has been a year unlike anything we could have imagined. And my encouragement, my challenge to us right now is to first of all, like and come get some. Let's get the focus off of ourselves. Let's realize that we've got brothers and sisters in our country and across the world who are enduring the same things that we are. And so let's look for opportunities to build others up right now. And as we do that, one, we glorify God, but two, we realize that there's unity, there's blessing, there's encouragement that comes through shared, shared struggle. 
and as we take the focus off ourselves, it gets a little easier. Struggle may not go away, but it does get a little easier. The second thing, right now, we have an opportunity to find out about ourselves as the body of Christ, capital C, big church, local church, and individual. The odds seem insurmountable. The chance for success seems very low. The deck seems stacked against us. Whether it's how do I, how do I navigate virtual classes, how do I deal with COVID, how do I deal with masks, whatever it may be. What is our approach during that time where it doesn't seem like we're going to be successful? Are we maximizing what God has given us during that time? And then lastly, fear is natural. We all experience it. But pray to God. Ask him to not let you become so consumed with fear that you brace for things that may or may not even happen. Ask God to help you, to give you the strength to push through the fear. And to stay focused on what it is that he's called you to do. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. He's not surprised by what's happening right now. Our adversity, our circumstances, our difficult times have not caught him off guard. Let's keep the focus on him through it. I once heard the quote. We shouldn't pray for a lighter cross, but we should pray for a stronger back. That's a scary prayer to pray. I don't know if I really want to pray, pray that prayer, but it's the one I should be praying. It's the one you should be praying. I love you guys because of our bond in Christ. I look forward to hopefully one day meeting a lot of you. And thank you again for this opportunity to share and be with you through this virtual format. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for my brothers and sisters right now, Lord. Uh, God, thank you for the technology to be able to, to, to share, to be with one another. God, I pray that the words that were said today would honor you. I pray that you would use them to challenge and build up the body of Christ. Thank you again for this opportunity. In your name we pray. Amen. Students, would you, would you commit to the three things that David talked about this morning? Would you commit to not allowing your hearts to be given over to fear? Would you commit this morning to setting your eyes on Jesus Christ? Because as you all know, as we are living through this day and age, there are so many things that will come into our lives and have come into our lives that will that will try to distract us, try to take our eyes off of Jesus. So will you commit to focus in on, on Christ? And would you commit to lifting each other up as we go through this together? Would you commit to those three things this morning? Father, thank you for the opportunity that we get to hear from David, the challenge, the, the encouragement that he's brought us, and then the challenge. Father, I pray for our hearts to not be given over to fear, to remember who you are, that, that you are our king and we are but visitors here. I pray that our eyes would be fixed and focused on Jesus Christ. That as these circumstances come in that, that want to come in and destroy, fight against our allegiances, that we would stay focused on Jesus and then lastly, Lord, would you really help us to look to the left and the right to see who needs help, that we might be used by you to help in these things. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, have a great day. You're dismissed.